guys, I'm Ryan Lath. I'm here with Aaron Wolf, youth pastor at Spring Creek at Somebody's God, and we are going to bring you a great conversation about longevity. Okay, so longevity, yep. okay, I think that this is one of those topics that I think everybody talks about and everybody wants. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't know that I talk to very many people that are like, yeah, man, you know, I'm just going to be a youth pastor for... <laughs> 12 months. Yeah, I'm hoping to bounce around. And then I'm going to go to another place and I'm going to move my whole family across the country. Yeah. I'll be there for like seven or eight months. And I'm going to move back. You know, so, so it's one of those things that I think everyone talks about. Like, I want longevity. That's my desire. But yep. so few people actually do it. Yep. Okay. So now you have, you've had some, some longevity here. You've been here for seven years, right? Nine years. Nine years. Okay. Yeah. So nine years and different lead pastors, right? Yeah. So different lead pastors, nine years. Um, what do you feel like is something that's different that you've done or experienced than maybe some other people haven't? Um, man, I just think, I think for all of us, we have natural like leadership lids that we hit. And it's when we hit that lid and when we hit that comfort level, our, our first instinct, I think especially as a staff pastor is to go, I feel like I've reached my time here. Mm. It's time to start looking. And so a, a move happens and we start over and we're going to reach that same lid and go, I feel like the grace, the grace is lifting. <laughs> it's time to look around. Um, I think it's just a viewpoint. Like I, when I came to Spring Creek, not that I was better than anyone doing that or had it, I just had made this decision. Like, I feel like I need to be here. And so I've been forced to reinvent myself. Uh, which over nine years has been really weird. I was telling someone just the other day, I was telling pastor, like to have gone from my first youth pastor retreat where I'm the new guy, I'm 24 years old. And I'm like this, uh, coming back to Oklahoma where I grew up. Yeah. I'm young. I'm, I'm, you know, no kids at that time. And now I show up and I'm like, who are all these people? Like I've been here nine years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got three kids. Like I'm the old guy, yeah. which is weird. Like it's, so it's been weird to transition to that, but I've been forced different times to go, okay, I need to, I got to change things. I got to grow through this. There's been some hard seasons, uh, but we just wanted to be here. Um, and it's just unbelievable to see this, uh, this, some of these culture things happening that I've looked around the last, even the last two years. I thought, did it take eight years to do like, Did it take eight years to feel this culture? Like, mm -hmm. but just the depth of relationship, um, my voice into our congregation, not just in our youth ministry, but even the way I speak to students, has changed because I'm I'm planted here. I've I've yep. earned that trust. Um, not yeah, that I didn't got, have that at three years. I'm assuming you probably have leaders now that were in your student ministries. Yes, most of my leadership team. So I have I have a a, a lot of parents, which I love. I love having parents as youth leaders. Uh, they have incredible hearts. So I have parents. I have so I have parents that were my age when we when I came in, and now and they had a four year old, and now their daughters in youth ministry, and they're still yep. youth leaders. Uh, but yeah, there was high school students that are now married with a kid that are some of my core leaders. I have college students now that have come up through the ranks. Uh, and yeah, it just, you see this, this return on investment, which is so hard to see in youth ministry. It's so hard. Some of those days you're like, what, what am I even doing? All right. So Wednesday night when you're sitting for me, I'm sitting in the gym after service. I'm like, what was that? Like, is this even working? Is this paying yeah. off? Yep. Uh, longevity allows you to go, oh, I'm seeing it. In my, I have a little closet in my office. Uh, we just had Grad Sunday, and I have up from 2014 to 2022 our Grad bulletins of all these faces. I'm like, I can see where these kids are, yep. and it's this consistency that I've I've had really difficult seasons. They go like, I don't want to leave just because time's hard right now. Now, if God says go, God says go. But I think sometimes we run too quick from yep. being planted somewhere, and we miss the the return on what we've been pouring into and sowing into. And we're pulling roots up and going, I'll go somewhere else yep. and not allowing that to develop. I think one of the biggest things that you said there that is probably one of the biggest hurdles is having to reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know I was listening to uh, Kerry Newhoff talk about the seasons of ministry. And he, he maps out all these uh, different stages at, at, at three years. You got you, you know, you hit this lid and at five yeah. years, at 10 years, you hit these lids. Right. And at some point, you have to reinvent yourself. Um, that, yeah, 
you know, you've hit some lids and maybe the size of the ministry, you hit some lids in, in your ability to speak or, you know, or whatever, you hit these lids and you either have to bust through them, mm-hmm. then you have to recreate yourself, reinvent yourself. And so a lot of people don't do that. And so I don't know, I don't remember the exact same, but it's kind of like, you know, the person that's like, hey, I've been a school teacher for 10 years. Well, actually you haven't. You've really been like, a, 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 you've done one year of teaching 10 times. Yeah. Right? It's like, are you, have you really been- Same in curriculum, history? same. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like you haven't really adapted. I mean, so every time you start over in a new youth ministry, you can you kind of rely on your ability. So some people, that lid is that entrepreneur spirit of like creating the youth ministry. Okay, you're designing it, you're creating it, you're implementing it. Yeah. But then that's the lid. Once all that's created, you haven't been able to push back, mm-hmm. push, reinvent yourself to, okay, now it's an established ministry and that's completely different. Right. So that's tough, right? To, to go into an environment where you're having to create it and then you're having to establish it and then you're having to reinvent it, right? And so how have you, I'm sure there's times where you've created a program or you've created a system and then maybe three, four years later, you're like, okay, that's not working anymore. And you've had to recreate that or even kill it. So how have you done that? Or do you have an example maybe when you've done that? Yeah. um, So unique in this time that we're in is like we've changed generations in the last nine years. So literally like from, you know, I grew up in the heyday of youth ministry, right? Late nineties, early two thousands. Yep. Every, I think every Extreme. youth ministry was running 150 students and the, like your church is 25 people and you got a hundred kids <laughs> in youth. Like every youth ministry is crushing. You're eating gross things yeah. every night. Like when I moved here, we were called Ignite Student Ministries. Come on. As with every, like we had the flame, like, um, and so that's what I grew up in. But then I start youth ministry to millennials which is kind of my zone. Like I'm an older millennial, but I start there and now we're fully into Gen Z. Most of, this is crazy, most of the students in my youth group were not born when I graduated high school. Yeah, Like that's what makes you feel old is when I realized that I graduated and then they all started being born as they're coming into my youth ministry. There's almost none left that aren't. And so I have had to, to there's seasons when you can be, so for, for the, the reinvention is really more about my own preferences. Mm. Like there's, there, I started ministry as a cool older brother, right? And then, and I've morphed into this father role, which I cherish so much that like a huge part of longevity is this, this spiritual father role that I've grown into with them. Um, but I speak less often. I, I've, we've added, like it went from, hey, small groups in a house would be cool to why aren't we doing small groups every Wednesday? Why aren't we doing, why am I, why am I speaking so often if that's not how they learn? So I gotta start talking less. I talk shorter and I talk fewer times so that they're in groups more. I'm empowering my leaders more. And like you said in that building process, I think you can build a ministry based on your talents, your abilities, your drive, your passion. And then once that is there, it, if you haven't risen any, raised any leaders, leaders up around you, raise leaders up to, to help you go further, then you go, well, this is the biggest we're gonna get. Mm. This is as far as I can go. I'm exhausted, I'm wearing myself out. This church doesn't value me. This is as big as we're gonna go. Yep. And I go do that again, because I'm building that on my talents, abilities, and passions. And so I think that's a great place to start. But entrusting people has been one of the biggest reinventions that I've gone through, going like, I don't just wanna delegate responsibilities. I wanna hand off things, like you're over this. Like. Yep. I have, I have parents that are helping lead our, our mission trips and you're you're leading worship, you're leading these things, you're leading teams uh, and just giving that over to people as much as I want my hand in it, my fingerprint in it, my time in it. Yep. Um, and that's a like that's an ongoing process, but I've had to see like my ideas are not the best ideas anymore. Like my vision might be like the vision that we have from the church and from pastor Darren, the vision God's given for youth ministry is different than my ideas for what's a cool on a Wednesday night. And so I have 21, 22 year old interns right now. They're like, what if we do this on a Wednesday? I'm like, that sounds so lame, but it's probably a way better. It's probably <laughs> cool. And so I've said, I've literally sent them to me like, I know sometimes like, if I actually like it, that's probably means yeah, it's a bad idea. A hundred percent. And that like, that's a Sunday thing as well. Like we, we believe like if, if I like everything that happens on a Sunday, we're missing it because we're not hitting everybody. Totally. There should be things I'm like, oh, this is not that cool or this is like yep. amazing. And so if I love everything we do on a Wednesday, our kids are probably like, this is lame. Like we're yeah. reaching 34 year olds, great. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I'm literally like, 
there's we're we were talking about like today we we're planning some of the things that are happening throughout the summer and I was like is that act- is that you really think that's cool and they're like yeah this would be awesome I said okay all right <laughs> I don't I don't believe you but I I believe it will be true like I don't, I don't see it but yeah I don't but I trust you yeah right and and one thing I love about the longevity piece is um you know you talked about that you're giving missions trip and you're not leading it um, but the thing about it is that those people have spent so much time with you that they are your fingerprint, yeah. right? I mean, they, yeah. they, they're, they're able to speak just like you, or they're able to just implement that culture that, because they've been with you so long, yeah. you don't have to worry about like, well, are they going to take the group in a different direction? Are you like, you know, you have that trust with them right. from being with them for five, six, seven, eight years. That they, you know, they've been on multiple trips with you, so they already know. Well, this is how we do missions trips. This is how we do small, you know. So you can freely delegate that without having the fear of. And are they going to kind of go in their own direction? Right. Um, and so longevity is tough, and there there has to be moments, I'm sure, where it's like, man, it'd be easier to kind of go somewhere else, man. You know, kind of look somewhere else. But then you stay. And on the other side of that, you find a new level of blessing, I'm sure. Yeah. And so those are tough moments. Um, I'm also sure that there's a lot of times where you have to have tough conversations, right? Those are all parts of longevity that I think a lot of people kind of run from. Um, And I'm sure that you've received it on both sides. You've initiated those and other people have initiated you. And that you, one thing I appreciate about you is that you're constantly growing in your own life. So what are some of those things that you've done in your own life to keep growing, maybe past those lids? What are some of those things that you have done to, you know, it's like you said, because you get up the lids and you got to move past them. So yeah. what are the things that you've done? Yeah. Um, man, I'm not certainly don't have it figured out. Um, I think sometimes it's just a matter of not giving up and just kind of grinding through this season of, and, and letting that um, season shape you into something deeper, which is yep. as biblical as it gets, right? Like James 1 talking about it's trials, it's testings that shape our faith and our endurance. So sometimes it's just um, like we went through a building remodel right before COVID and then we went through COVID and went through a password transition. Like some of those things I'm like, I want, let me just go somewhere else. It'd be easier. And literally just staying in it mm. shaped me to be stronger on the other side, shaped me to be better on the other side. Um, flexibility in those seasons has helped me to be better yep. through the lid. Um, my role has changed multiple times in nine years. I'm, I've always been in youth, but there's times that youth felt like this side gig I had. And there's times it's like, I have no time for anything else. I'm so ingrained in youth. And so um, I have different roles in design and in young adults and really leaning into that this past couple of years and our new kind of in our new staff model. But that flexibility um, certainly has been a huge step. I think I valued relationships a lot more in, in that time, especially through those hard seasons. So like I have, a, I have a group of guys that I have coffee with on Tuesday mornings that it's just the, it's the most raw, honest, yep. we just are ourselves. Um, I think you need people that, not that we're ever uh, disingenuous, you'll know what I mean, but like that I don't have to be Pastor Aaron around. Yep. Not that I'm fake when I'm Pastor Aaron, but there's like, I'm not going to tell a 17 year old all my struggles yep. and my frustrations and why I'm a terrible husband or why I'm frustrated at, at being a dad. But I got some guys that I can do that with. And I didn't have that for a lot of years. Um, there's a lot of years that I was just put the smile on, right? Like I'm good. And it's a lot of times that lid is a moment that I got to have some people that I can be honest with and real with um, that help me through that help me get better, help me uh, stay in it, or I just want to start over. I feel like just starting over allows you to put that face back on and until I reach that level of um, just not my own natural limitations. So, so that's been a huge, I don't know that that's a, something I ever thought of as a growth step, but having some genuine friendships that are not necessarily people I'm leading in ministry or people that I don't walk in the door and get called Pastor Aaron. I'm just, I sit down at coffee. Yep. And we're just hanging out and talking. Um, and that's been huge, huge, huge in my life. I love it. Any words of advice for somebody that um, you know really wants to have longevity, wants to stick it out, 
you know, any encouragement for them, words of like, hey, this is what I'd suggest for you? Um, yeah, I would say if you, if you can follow your pastor, if you can trust his heart and his vision when you're on staff, then I think um, it's worth sticking out. It's worth staying around. Now, I think there's times that we go like, I just can't work in this. I can't work here. I've been in bad cultures before. Like, I get that. Um, but I think it's always worth it if you can be bought into the to the heartbeat of the church to stick it out. I think um, we can't take for granted just the truth in Scripture of sowing and reaping. Right? Galatians 6, 9, like, don't get tired of doing what is good for at the right time you reap a harvest of blessing if you don't give up. Yeah. Um, I think, I just truly think so many of us, and I've been there myself, like I think so many people in youth ministry pull up what they've planted before they get to see a harvest come forth because it's difficult and it's hard um, and something looks better and that paycheck might look better or that title or that church size might look better. Um, and not that all transition is bad, but I think so many times that we're missing out on some really cool things that God wants to do in us personally and in our ministries and in the people that we're leading because uh, we're pulling up all the things that we've planted yep. before it's time for that blessing to come around. So, yep. I think oftentimes people, um, I, I try to encourage people, go a little bit slower. Yeah. You know, I, there's few people that I talk to that say, man, we just, you know, we just went too slow. Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. it's like, oh man, we just... We, we thought about this too long, you know? I mean, I, I think there are times where it's like, okay, you know, but you're just not doing it. There's right. definitely those times, but I think oftentimes people move a little too quick. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, great words of advice, man. And um, I've just seen it in your life. Um, you know, the fruit of longevity is so hard um, to manufacture because it just mm -hmm. takes time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like it just that, that trust level. Um, the fact that you said, you know, you've had people who graduate your ministry and they come back and serve and then they're still around for so long. There's just a depth of trust and understanding that you yeah. can't manufacture. Yeah. So such a good word, man. I appreciate your time and uh, excited to bring you guys some more conversations here soon.